of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. And so I love this story in Nehemiah, uh, Nehemiah 4. I've been camping out there a lot over the last few weeks about how they're, 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 they're uh, coming into this impossible situation to rebuild the wall and they're getting, you know, they're getting slandered, they're getting cursed, they're getting mocked, they're getting jabbed. I mean, it's kind of all the things that have happened to us this year. I mean, literally the mainstream media, there's not an outlet in the mainstream media that hasn't taken their shot at me that's not assaulted our character, that's not... Uh, I mean, Rolling Stone put us on the front cover of their website, you know, just blasting us for for gathering people to worship Jesus. Who knew that would be so controversial? Uh, but we've had, you know, the death threats that have come in, in, in our in our we've had death threats sent to our house. We've had horrible things said to us over social media. And, you know, I, I love how in this in this. Uh, passage, there is a gritty resolve and determination that rises in the hearts of the people, and they refuse to listen to the, the the sound and the noise of the culture. They refuse to be to bow in fear. They refuse to to do anything but to step into their moment of prophetic promise and fulfillment. And I love how um, you know it's it it talks about how the the Jews live near them. He told them ten times over, wherever you turn, they will attack you. You know, they've told us, you can't go into this city, you'll get, you know, they'll, they'll block you out. You can't go into this place, you can't go into this, it's impossible. And guess what? We've been to 52 cities, and a lot of them are the most volatile, riot-infested, uh, violent-stricken, um, far-left, liberal-run cities in America. And not one time have they been able to stop the spread of an unstoppable kingdom, and God showed up every time. But it has taken grit, it has taken determination and it says, this is one of my favorite lines in it. I want to read it over you guys. It says, therefore, uh, uh, Nehemiah 4, uh, verse 13, it says, therefore, station people behind the lowest points of the wall at exposed places, posting them by families with their swords, spears, and bows. And after I look, after I look things over, I stood up and said to the nobles and the officials and the rest of the people, this is what I want you to get. Don't be afraid of them. <laughs> Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your families. Fight for your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. And I love that. And I continue. I mean, that whole story is amazing. It just gets better and better. But I love that line there. Fight, fight for, remember God. Rem carry the revelation of how awesome and big and enormous and amazing our God is. But then also fight for your families and sons and daughters, your wives and homes. Realize what is at stake. And I think that's what we have to understand in this season. We got to understand what is at stake right now. I mean, what is at stake in America? What is at stake uh, in, in the nations of the world? One of the reasons we're in California is they say, so goes California, so goes the nation. People are saying, why don't you move? Come to Texas, <laughs> like a lot of you guys. And I'm telling you, it's, it's tempting. I lived in Texas. It's amazing. I mean, uh, the tax rate, the, the <laughs> highways are big, the gas is cheap, people are friendly. I mean, rate. I love it, I'm but there's you. something about the fight in California that God is calling us into. And I feel like there's a destiny on it for America and the nations. But I love how this is a season where we got to remember what we're fighting for. You know, this is, yes, the religious freedom. Yes, the basic constitutional rights. But we're fighting for the future of our children and our families. And the one key that I believe the Lord wants, want, and I just, this is what I would impart to you, if anything. Yes, we're in a fight right now. I feel like it's time for Christians to rise up and be courageous. It's time for pastors to be bold. It's time for us to preach the gospel. It's time for us to stop apologizing for the things that Jesus said. I mean, we cannot be a soft church anymore. Like we have to preach the gospel of the kingdom, however it may offend, whatever trouble it may get us into. It is the only cure. It is the only cure for the world that we live in today. But I also believe that there is an ability for us to fight with joy. And that's the thing I want to encourage you. There's a lot of Christians out there, and I've been one of them. I will admit it, you know, and I get riled up by certain things. I get riled up by certain politicians, by mayors, by senators, by the things people say, and I get really gritty and feisty. 
you know, and I, I can, I can get on Twitter and blah, 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 you know, and, and, and I, I just realizing in this season, the Lord wants to baptize us with a spirit of joy to where it's like that Psalm two reality. Like he who sits in the heavens laughs. Like we are called to be the people that yes, we're fighting. Yes, it's intense. Yes, we're interceding. Yes, we're pressing in, but we're doing it from a place of joy because we know who is in control. We know who is on the throne. And so what we're most excited about this New Year's Eve is to really party in the New Year's. I mean, we ordered cryo machines to go off and explosions. We ordered fireworks. We're going to have glow sticks and we are going to have the most incredible worship set of joy. We are going to dance like crazy people. In fact, there's a line in one of the songs uh, that I love. You know, we've been writing all these new songs because I believe it's a season for a new sound too in America. Uh, the post COVID sound of the church is going to be different. Um, I really believe that with all my heart, but we've been writing these songs and some of the lyrics that have been coming to me, you know, is, is, is you turn the valley of weeping into a place of joy. You turn the seasons of disappointment into a dance floor. And that's one of the songs uh, that we're going to be releasing on New Year's. And I just, I just feel like we're called to to fight, but do it from a place of joy. And we're called to celebrate in this season. We need to celebrate. It has been intense. It's been difficult. And even if we have to, even if you don't feel it, even if it doesn't feel joyful, I'm telling you, there is a place of grace. If we will enter in, if we will be intentional to say, regardless of what's happening around me, regardless of the political climate, regardless of, of who wins the presidential election, we are going to be a people full of joy. And we are we're going to fight with a smile on our face and we're going to see God come, the God of deliverance, the God of hope, the God who brings justice and righteousness to our families and our communities and cities. We're going to see him break in in 2021, unlike ever before. I have faith for it. I'm praying that you have faith for it. And let me just, let me just release something over here. God, I thank you for the Let's privilege to get to speak into such a beautiful group of people, God, that are pressing into your heart for the new season. I pray that you would grip them with a spirit of expectation and wonder for what you want to do, God. It's not just another year. It's not just another day. We can't haphazardly just walk into it. There's something so fresh and so unique and so full of joy that right now the angels are dancing and twirling and flipping around because they're so excited to see the kingdom of God break out in our lives and our families and our communities in this year, unlike ever before. And we partner with that joy tonight in Jesus name. Amen. Wow. God bless Let's you thank guys. God for thank Trump. you so much for hearing my heart. Lord, we I hope pray to see you very soon. This gathering that is now beginning right now in uh, California at Azusa. Father, we ask you right now for an importation. We ask that a revival anointing rise up. Father, we ask for the surprise power of Holy Spirit to enter into that meeting. Father, we thank you for what you are doing with us. We thank you that we can't keep silent. We thank you that we can't be quiet. We thank you that we can't stop from going out. Lord, we thank you that this year we will advance. Just shout and thank God for that.